Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, June 25th, 2012 meeting of the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners. We have a quorum. All three members are present, and we will begin with the flag salute. Commissioner Schulte. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes of June 18. I second that. Motions made and seconded to approve the minutes. Any questions, comments, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. There is no public comment this morning. Is anyone in the audience like to comment before we begin? Then we'll move forward. Nothing done? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the notice agenda. Oh. One item, resolution number 12, 214. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the notice agenda. Will the clerk please read that into the minutes? Item number one, notice pertaining to competitive bidding, dispensing with advertisement, and advertisement of Lewis County vendor list and solicitation. Resolution number 12-214. This is the follow-on of the uh, policy which we uh, passed last week on uh, bidding and competitive bidding uh, under $25,000. Um, that particular RCW requires that at least twice per year that the county advertise that um, what the rules are for competitive bidding and to open up the vendor list for competitive bidding for items between $5,000 and $25,000. So this resolution provides notice pertaining to competitive bidding, dispensing with advertisement and sealed bidding with respect to purchases and leases under $25,000 and notice of the Lewis County vendor list in solicitation, RCW 39.04.190, sets the rules for exception to competitive bidding for items and services under $25,000. The Lewis County Auditor's Office is required at least twice annually to adv advertise the rules in the county's legal publication and to open the vendor list for solicitation. Individuals seeking to be included in the county vendor list need to make application to the Lewis County Auditor's Office. This notice complies with the semi-annual requirement. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll ask for the vote. All in favor of Resolution 1. 2-214, be signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda items 2 through 9, resolutions 12215 through 12222. I second that. Motion is made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Will the clerk please read those items into the minutes? Item number two, resolution number 12-215, approval of warrants and payroll for payment. Item number three, resolution number 12-216, cancellation of warrants. Item number four, resolution number 12-217, acceptance of a Washington State Patrol statewide marijuana eradication program agreement. Item number five, resolution number 12-218, approving an agreement with Catholic Community Services of Western Washington in support of senior nutrition meals distribution in Lewis County. Item number six, Resolution number 12-219, reappointing members to the Veterans Advisory Board. Item number seven, resolution number 12-220, approving revisions to the Planning Commission rules of procedures and bylaws. Item number eight, resolution number 12-221, approving a collective bargaining agreement with Teamsters 252, representing Lewis County Supervisors Group. Item number nine, Resolution number 12-222, transfer of accumulated annual and sick leave from the Solid Waste Fund 401 to the Road Fund 117. Item two, resolution 12-215, approve 16 special purpose warrants for the Vader water system for $27,980.61 and 267 warrants issued by the auditor's office for $748,000 $870.14, totaling $776,850 and 
and 75 cents. It also approves 259 warrants for net withdrawal on payroll, totaling $233,144. Item 2, 12216, approves the cancellation of three warrants which were lost or destroyed that were issued by the Lewis County Auditor's Office for a total of $710 and authorizes the reissue of one warrant for $350. Gene. Good morning. My name is Gene Sieber. I'm the Chief Criminal Deputy with the Sheriff's Office. Here to brief you on Resolution 12-217, the Sheriff's Office requesting authority to sign the 2012 Washington State Patrol Statewide Marijuana Eradication Program Agreement, WSP Agreement Number C. Charles 120818, Frank Edward David, FED, Funds are made available each year by Washington State Patrol for the purpose of locating and eradicating marijuana by the Sheriff's Office personnel. The Sheriff's Office administers this program in accordance with Washington State Patrol policy. This year's funding is $1,000. Any other questions? Thank you. I find it a little bit ironic that at the same time we're eradicating marijuana, we're opening up mar medical marijuana. <laughs> Just saying. Cynic. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, Michael Strozik, Director of Central Services. Item number five on your agenda is resolution number 12-218. It's approving an agreement with Catholic Community Services of Western Washington in support of senior nutrition meal distribution in Lewis County. In 2010, specifically January 1st, Lewis County entered into an agreement with Catholic Community Services of Western Washington to take over the senior programs in Lewis County. That included the transportation, the senior nutrition program, and the enrichment program. Um, that program has been going since then. In February of 2012, Catholic Community Services, in, in accordance with the current contract, served Lewis County with a notice that they were willing or wanting to discontinue the enrichment portion of that contract, effective July 1st of 2012. They did want to keep the nutrition program and the senior transportation program, however. This created a dilemma for both Lewis County and CCS at the time for the distribution of the senior meals at the five senior centers in Lewis County. So through a series of negotiations, we have entered into an agreement with Catholic Community Services for the next six months beginning July 1st of 2012 through December 31st of 2012 to allow them use of our current senior centers, the five in Lewis County, for specifically distribution of the senior nutrition meal program. In addition to that, the agreement also allows them to use the large walk-in cooler and freezer that is located at Twin Cities for distribution of those programs. This agreement does have a one-year extension if we need to roll it over effective July 1st of 2013 so we don't have a break in the program for the seniors. As part of this agreement, CCS will be paying Lewis County $2,300 per month for use of the centers for the distribution of the program. And that also includes some freezer reefer space for it does sir i think i mentioned that they it is very adamant that they or they were very adamant that they could use the large walk-in coolers to store the food as the board is aware their food comes in frozen um, once a week and they needed some place to store it so we will section a piece of that off for them to store their food now, just for clarification the, the the nutrition program has two components to it the first component is what we call congregate and we do that, our Catholic Community Services, I should say, does that in our senior centers. The Twin Cities Center gets five meals a week, uh, and the other uh, four centers get two meals a week in, in, the, in the nutrition program. And Catholic Community Services also d does what we call wheels, meals to wheels, where they take um, uh, meals to uh, shut-ins uh, that um, can't make it to the senior centers. Correct. So that's the program we're running. Uh, when there are meals in the senior centers that are not on that CCS nutrition schedule, that is part of the enrichment program. And I can tell you that, uh, that on Saturday, uh, while we were at the parade at Winlock, that the uh, Eloqua Senior Center there in Winlock had a wonderful uh, potato bar 
uh, and I had probably one of the best uh, strawberry shortcakes I had in a long time, homemade uh, shortcake uh, in there. So it was uh, it was really good. But that's the part of the program we're picking up. Is that that's correct. Right. The, correct. The, the seniors support that part of the program partially on their own. We have we have in the past been supportive of the new, the enrichment program. And I want to make it clear that this is an agreement that goes through the end of 2012. Uh, we are in negotiations right now, or will be, with AAA to try to make it so that it, it uh, is either opened up so that we can come back into the program which, uh, or, or roll it over to CCS. As Mike said, it's a one-year um, agreement with them if we roll it over with them. So we're in negotiations with AAA to see how that's going to come out. Lewis County is very unique in our senior programs. We're only one of two counties in the state that provide general fund revenue for our senior citizen programs. And uh, it's a, it's a su substantial amount of money. We hope we can get more involvement in that in order to be more supportive of it. So. And I might add, this agreement does not touch the senior transportation program or as Commissioner Averill was talking about, the homebound meals program. Those are totally separate contracts between CCS and AAA up. Thank you. Item six, resolution 12219, approves the reappointment of Roland Jones from Chehalis and Robert Terrell from Chehalis to a two-year term as regular members of the Lewis County Veterans Advisory Board, and the appointment of Harlan Thompson from Centralia and William Gannon from Centralia to a two-year term as alternate members, all, all four for the period July 1, 2012 through June 30, 2014. This also appoints Jim Roses uh, from uh, uh, Chehalis, currently an alternate member of the board, to a regular member of the board, filling the remaining year of a term ending on June 30, 2013. All of the appointees have expressed an interest in serving on the board. The uh, Veterans Advisory Board advises the county commissioners on, on veterans affairs, and uh, one of the uh, duties that they have is uh, we have a, a millage that uh, goes to support uh, indigent veterans, and the Veterans Advisory Board uh, provides uh, policy recommendations to us on the distribution of that fund. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Lynn Dietrich with Community Development, the senior project planner, and I'll be giving the briefing on resolution 12-220. It's a revision request from the planning commission to revise their start time from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. on their regularly scheduled meetings held on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month. The planning commission discussed uh, this change on January 24, 2012 and May 8, 2012. And they have provided you with uh, the change request. They've also, uh, the results of, the, of a no approval on this would be that they would continue to have their start time at seven. Uh, staff concurs with the Planning Commission and therefore recommends uh, approval of the request from their start time of six, or seven to 6 p.m. Also, it was discussed that there would be the opportunity within uh, the Planning Commission's rules of procedures and bylaws that there be an, uh, the availability to adjust that time as warranted if they're in other parts of the county. And uh, if you had special meetings, those would be held, uh, handled separately. The actual special meeting would set the state time. That's correct. Time starting time. That still is in their bylaws. The, um, uh, some might think it curious that we're approving uh, this start time, but the bylaws of the Planning Commission have to be approved by the County Commissioners, so by making this rather small change, we, we need to approve it for them. That's correct. Thank you, Lynn. Good morning, Commissioners. Archie Smith with Lewis County Human Resources. I'm here to present item number eight, resolution number 12-221, approving a collective bargaining agreement between Lewis County and the supervisors group represented by Teamsters 252. 
This is a one-year collective bargaining agreement state going from January 1st, 2012 through December 31st, 2012. There is no COLA for the year. Step increases are included. The employer health and welfare contribution will change as of July 1st from 857.97 to a maximum of 865.88 effective again July 1st. And there was also a boot allowance at the director's uh, discretion. And that was $150. $150, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Archie, when I was going through here, I did not uh, see any reference to the payroll language change. Oh, sorry, that is in the contract. Okay. It might actually, I think that one actually had it last year in the previous. Oh, okay. Could have. I'd have to go back, but it is in the contract. Yeah, if you would clarify for that for me, I'd appreciate it. Yes, I will, sir. There is one more contract we have to finish. Actually, there's more. There's actually two. Um, both 911 and juvenile detention voted down the offers that we made and so we are back to the table with them we also have in our interest arbitration group we are still at the table with the corrections officers and we should be meeting with the operations guild i'm thinking here within the next month or two and also with the corrections sergeants and then we have the unit clarification with the corrections lieutenants thank you Archer. Good morning, Commissioners. Tim Elsie, Lewis County Public Works Director, speaking to item number nine, resolution 12-222, transfer of accumulated annual and sick leave from the Solid Waste Fund 401 to the Road Fund 117. Lauren Buckman, a Solid Waste Tech 2, has accepted the position of an RMT2 within the Road Maintenance Division of Public Works. When an employee transfers from one fund to another, such as Solid Waste to Roads, the new funds must be paid by the original fund for leave accumulations. This includes all annual leave to a maximum of 240 hours and half of the sick leave to a maximum of 360 hours, which is half of their total accumulated booked hours. The employee still retains all hours booked to date to transfer, including any current month earnings eligible when the transfer occurs after the first of the month. Lauren Buckman has accumulated annual leave in the amount of 39.1 hours and sick leave in the amount of 82.6 hours, half of which we're asking to be transferred. Uh, we're requesting for his leave balances to be transferred from fund 401 to road fund 117 for half the dollar value of his accumulated sick leave and for the entire value of his annual leave. Some uh, might find it curious that we're approving something this of an employee is moving within the county. Um, but what happens is that we, we carry each activity on a separate funding um, uh, item. Um, and so when someone moves from one group to another, uh, we have to move their accumulated leave uh, along with them or they would lose it. Uh, and so the reason uh, for doing this today is a common procedure. I know that when I was working for state government that when there are moves between agencies in the state, the same type of, of procedure takes place so that they can move their accumulated leave. Um, and uh, the, the, in this particular case, they only get half the sick leave uh, because uh, when, if they don't use their sick leave before they finish their, their employment, uh, they only get paid at half the rate of their accumulated leave. So that's the reason why we only pass on half of it. That's correct. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Okay, that concludes our comments. Are there any other comments on the consent agenda? And I will call for the vote on the consent agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We have two hearings this morning. As usual, the procedure is for a staff report, followed by a question and answer period, which will then be followed by public comments on the two items. And um, so we will open the hearing at this time and we'll have staff comment. Good morning, Mr. Commissioners. Truman. Donna Truman, Budget Director. I'm here to request approval of the third budget amendment for 2012, resolution 12-223. Notice of public hearing was published in the East County Journal on June 13th and June 20th. I will um, provide a total amount of the change. The county has over 50 different funds and this amendment affects 15 of them. 
A more detailed description of these budget changes can be found at the front of the room. Total budget amendment for all funds was noticed at revenue increase of $418,944, expenditure increase of $1,704,785, which is a change in our fund balance of $1,285,841. The change in fund balance uses previously re received revenue that is not legally appropriated in the original 2012 budget. Changes since the noticed amount resulted in an increase in expenditures of $104,711 for the total amendment. Of this change, $4,711 affected our current expense fund, which is our main operating fund in the county. All funds for the final amount are $415,994 in new revenue, expenditures in the amount of $1,809,496, and change in our fund balances of $1,393,502. Included in the totals above are changes in the operating fund or our current expense fund. This amendment affects seven of 30 departments in this fund. The total amount of the current expense appropriation is changed by new revenue of $39,300, increase in expenditures of $382,401, and change in current expense fund balance of $343,101. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you're dealing with the budget, it, it can get uh, really confusing. And uh, the fact that we've got 50 different accounts out there is part of the problem. Uh, when, when we generally talk about uh, our budget, um, the part of the budget which some folks call discretionary is the current expensive budget. This is the, the money that, that we collect through our, our um, property taxes, our sales taxes, grants and things like that, predominantly to run most of the departments of government, so the sheriffs, the courts, uh, and things of this nature. The, the all other funds are special funds that we uh, get, uh, which include our roads fund, uh, our uh, distributions from the health department, from uh, DHSH, um, uh, again, uh, a very large number of them. Uh, there are also some, uh, some funds that, that we have which are um, uh, basically running a business like our solid waste fund. Uh, or, or enterprise funds uh, that, that they're called. And each of those are separate. Uh, and so when we make a, a point that we're changing in fund balances of 1,393,502, that's fund balances spread out among those 15 accounts. Of, of, the, of those accounts, the current expense fund balance is only $343,101. Uh, and that is primarily because we're having to pick up the, uh, the, the responsibility for the um, enrichment program in the senior centers. Right. So uh, we're not dipping into uh, much of uh, our fund balance and, and we're keeping this in the black. Uh, but we, uh, one of the things that we get with enterprise funds and we get with grants from the state uh, and the federal government is those things often are paid up front, we hold them in account, and we spend them as we go. Uh, and so there's, there are, can be large fund balances in, in those accounts just because they're paid up front rather than uh, at the end. On the other hand, we've got other ones where we have to actually spend the money and then we get reimbursed. Uh, so uh, this is one of the problems that, that our um, uh, budget and fiscal office has to deal with is keeping these things in balance and making sure that we've got enough in our fund balances to continue our operations. Thank you. Are there any other questions regarding these changes? <coughs> I'll close the question answer hearing and ask if you would like your comments incorporated into the record. Yes, I would. We'll open the hearing on uh, the comment period. Is any, are there any comments from the board or the public? <coughs> One is signed up. Any comments from the board or the public on this issue? I will close the hearing and call for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve budget amendment resolution number 12223. Second. 
Motion has been made and seconded to approve resolution. I thought he was going to give one the title. Two, I was waiting for the title. Two, two, three. Will the clerk please read that into the record? Regarding Lewis County 2012 budget, emergency and supplemental appropriations and transfers within current expense and various funds, resolution number 12 223. No other comment. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Commissioners, I'm here for a second hearing um, for the first budget amendment for 2012 for Vader Water System Fund 623, which is Resolution 12-224. The first 2012 budget amendment has been published in the East County Journal on June 13th and June 20th. Increasing expenditures and use of fund balance for the Dr Drinking Water State Revolving Fund loan, which is um, $2,050. It's 25% of the annual debt service payment, and these funds are to be paid directly into the new debt service fund number 211 and remain in reserve until such time as we make the loan payment. Okay, this is the fund we just established last week yes, for the purpose of, of keeping this reserve uh, balance here. So this is our first payment into the fund which we just, just created. We're budgeting the entire amount. The first amount notice was $5,000 because we were estimating and waiting for an actual amount. We reduced that to $2,050 in the final okay. budget amendment. And those uh, funds come out of the, the ratepayers' fees? Those come out of ratepayers' fees, which is in an agency fund, 623. That's why we adopt this as a separate budget amendment. Okay. And Don, we're starting that repair real quick on those pipes. Are there any other questions? I'll close the question and answer period and open the comment period on this hearing. Are there any other comments from the board and or the public? Or from Vader? Hey, Vader's part of the public, believe it or not. <laughs> they are part of the public. I just want to make sure they get a special invitation. Sure, come on up, Don. <laughs> <laughs> State your name and address, please. Tim Elsie said he thinks you're right. <laughs> Don Eddings Vader. Right. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank every county employee that went the extra mile for Vader Water. I think they did a great job. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. And I can't get it out of my pocket now. And I really appreciate these uh, newsletters that we get with our bill. It's got some good verbiage in it. <laughs> okay, Don, thanks. <laughs> Do we send them newsletters with their bills? No, Public Tim does. Writes a very nice little newsletter. Good, good deal. Any other comments? And I will close the hearing. And Mr. Chairman, then I would move that we approve uh, Resolution 12-224, the first budget amendment to the Vader water system. I second that. Thank you. Um, I, protocol, I need to ask if Donna's comments, you'd like your comments incorporated into the results yes, I would. for the record. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to approve resolution 1224. Will the clerk please read that into the minutes? Regarding Vader Water System 2012 budget, emergency and supplemental appropriations, resolution number 12-224. Are there any further comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, with no further business, I move we adjourn. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay.